Hi everyone, welcome back to my DIY home with Liz. In today's video, we're doing a Dollar Tree DIY. So if you'd like to see how I put together these three projects, just keep watching. thank today's sponsor Eco Peco Art. They sent me some cutting mats. They have amazing cutting mats and you guys know as DIYers that we need to use our cutting mats. The thing I really like about these mats is they come in varying sizes. So I like to use the larger one whenever I'm cutting larger projects. I like the medium sized one to sit out on my table whenever I need to measure something. And then the smaller one for me, I kind of like using to measure things. It makes kind of a great little ruler system and it's also great for cutting smaller projects. So you're gonna see how I use these mats in my first project today, but the reason I love these mats in particular is because they're eco-friendly. These mats are self-healing mats that have less weight than your normal cutting mats. And you guys know I love anything that's better for the environment. So if you're interested in learning more about these mats or checking them out, I'll leave a link below in the description box. Okay you guys, so the first project we're going to do is this amazing box that I put together. And what you're going to need for this project is you're going to need to pick up a welcome rug from Dollar Tree. These are only a dollar and I thought this would make the perfect sign for the front of our crate. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start with a good pair of scissors and I'm going to cut out this welcome sign. You want to cut along the edges, making sure that you cut all of the black area out. People have asked me where I picked up these scissors. I actually got them as a gift from QVC from my mom. So if you're looking for these, just check the QVC website. So you want to make sure that you get in between the letters as well. Just cut out in between so that there's no black left on this rug. From there, I'm going to use my larger mat, the 24 by 36 size mat. I'm also going to be using this cardboard that I grabbed at Dollar Tree. This is one of those folding systems that they use for like science fair, but I grabbed one of these. It's just a, a thicker cardboard. So from there, what you wanna do is place your welcome sign on top of the cardboard. And then I'm gonna be using the medium size mat, the 24 by 18, to help me create a straight line. And I'm just gonna draw around this sign and create the front of my box. From there, I'm gonna create two more additional pieces that are gonna be about the same size. You're also going to want to cut these out with a rotary cutter, should work great. And the mat is perfect because you're not going to damage your table and it's a really great surface for cutting things like this. From there, I'm going to use my mat to cut two smaller pieces that are seven inches long. So you want to draw out seven inches and create a line, and then you'll use your rotary cutter to cut these out. These are going to be the side pieces to our crate. Next, you want to take your pieces outside and I am going to spray paint the edges and in the middle of this with black spray paint. I buy the Rust-Oleum spray paint at Walmart. I think it's around $3.50, but it lasts me forever. The black paint is going to help to create a little bit of dimension in our crate. From there, you're going to cut out a piece of laminate that's the length of your cardboard. Then you're going to cut it into strips. It doesn't really matter how long your strips are. I think I counted in maybe five or six boxes on the back of the laminate paper and I cut it across. This laminate paper you can pick up at Dollar Tree. 
Next, you're going to apply the laminate to your cardboard. And I got this technique from Megan at Glue Guns and Roses. She did this on a sign, and I'll link her channel below so you can check out some of her videos. She's awesome. But what I'm going to do here is I'm just gonna take the laminate and I'm going to put it in strips on my crate, leaving a little gap, I would say about half a centimeter in between, and you're gonna be able to see that black through, and that's just going to give it more of a wood-like appearance. So you're going to repeat that same steps on the back piece as well as your side pieces, putting the laminate on. Now determine which of your longer pieces is your best piece, and that's gonna be the front of your crate. From there, you're going to hot glue this welcome sign onto the front. And I just put it out, and then slowly, I just picked up pieces and hot glued them on. I felt like that made it a little bit more secure than trying to put all the glue on and then putting it on my piece. If you'd like to use E6000, you could do that as well. To make our crate look a little bit more farmhouse, what you want to do is take the metal pieces from the ends of this Easter sign, and you're just going to pop them off with your scissors, and then I just attach them with a hot glue gun to the side. So you're going to use your small mat to measure in one inch, and then hot glue your metal pieces down. From there, you can fill it with whatever you like. I decided to put in four of my IKEA plants because you guys know I love these IKEA plants. And here's a look at the finished product. If you guys enjoy watching these DIY projects, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I post three to four DIYs each week and I don't want you to miss out on any of them. Okay you guys, this next project is super easy but I love the way it turned out. So I found this canvas at Dollar Tree and it says don't go bake in my heart which I thought was really cute and I knew I wanted to do something with it. I also found this other sign that had that really cool top piece to it and I knew it would be perfect for some kind of farmhouse sign. So what you want to do for this project First, you're going to take your sign that's hanging on the string and you're going to paint the bottom of it. I'm just using some cheap black paint that I have from Walmart and you're just going to paint the bottom of this sign in black. I didn't do the whole thing, just the bottom. And then you're going to do two coats of the black paint. Next, you're going to get your canvas sign, take it out of all of the frame, and then you're just going to be left with the piece of paper. So from there, you need to cut it down so that it fits the length of the other sign. So I just centered it up, flipped it on the back, and then just kind of cut it down until it fit nicely into the middle of my sign. Next, I'm going to take matte Mod Podge, and you can pick this up at Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to squirt some on the top of the sign, and then I will place my paper on the sign. You wanna let that completely dry before you put the top layer on. I found that if I let it dry, I have less bubbling before I put on the top layer. Next, you just want to put on a top layer of Mod Podge on your whole sign. Let that completely dry and then you have an adorable sign that I think is perfect to hang in your kitchen. Ok, 
Okay, you guys, so I was hunting around Dollar Tree looking for some DIY projects and I came across these Frisbees. And I immediately thought in my head, tiered tray. So I thought I would try it out and I actually really like the way it looks. So I picked up three of these small Frisbees and then I also got these little mini appetizer glasses. They may be, I'm not really sure what kind of glasses they are, but they're over in the party section. From there, what you're going to want to do is you're gonna cut up your Frisbees. So keep one of your Frisbees completely how it is. The second Frisbee, you're just going to go into the first opening and you're gonna use a good pair of scissors and you're going to trim around the edges so that you just have a nice and smooth edge. With your third Frisbee, you're going to go in and trim around the second part so that you just have that center portion left. Next, I'm going to take all of the pieces outside and I'm gonna spray paint them white. I'm so happy that it's starting to get warm and I can go outside and spray paint again. It's been so hard having to paint everything inside, so I love that I can get outside and spray paint again. So just spray everything white, both sides, So because with a tear tray, you will see both sides. And then from there, I decided it'd be cool to add some rope. So I picked up that thick rope that you can get at Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to create small little wrapping areas on my Frisbees. So I started in those open areas, because I didn't like the open areas, and I just put hot glue along each of the little pieces that are in that opening area and I wrapped it around. And so you're going to do that with all three of your Frisbees. And then I also put a layer on the edge of my Frisbees as well. To assemble this, you're going to hot glue one of the cups to the bottom Frisbee. From there, I did add additional rope around the edge of that cup. Then you're going to add the middle plate to the top of the cup. I'm just using hot glue. If you want it to be stronger, use E6000. And then you're going to put the second cup on the middle plate and adding your rope around this as well. To finish it off, just put the small plate on top. I did decide after I was done doing this that I wanted additional rope around the bottom. So just kind of look at it and see how it works for you. And then from there, you just want to decorate your tray with this cute farmhouse look. are gonna have to let me know which of these three projects was your favorite I don't know I kind of like them all it's hard for me to tell so leave me a comment below letting me know your favorite and if you're interested in checking out the eco peco art mats that I used in this video just look in the description box if you love watching Dollar Tree DIYs I will link another one right here so you guys can go watch that video next and I'll talk to you in my next video bye